Perplexity, of course, is the well-known AI search engine. It's gotten up to 780 million queries per month as of May, Jason. And they've been teasing this Comet browser for some time. Now it is gated. So if you don't have a Perplexity Max subscription, which runs you about 200 bucks a month, you're probably gonna be on the wait list like myself. Uh, so I had, didn't get a chance to play with it, but Jason, I did go through and pull up Dia for us and have a little demo of what it can do. But I think we'll start with Comet because that's the fresh news today and then we'll do a little side by side. Yeah, so I I actually just went and paid for the $200 thing ah, just for the go. audience here to see it at work. That's a business model for you. Launch a higher price tier, then drop your coolest thing and put it right behind that gate. And you know what? 10 points. It worked. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like if it's, this doesn't provide enough value, which I don't think it does, uh, you know, after an hour, half an hour, an hour of using it, I don't think it's probably enough value for $2,000 or $2,400 a year. But at 50 bucks a month, I probably would sign up for it. So somewhere between those two numbers is reality for me, but maybe I'll find other things. So here I said, I'm looking for flights to San Francisco on United for Monday morning. Then I want to fly to New York City from San Francisco, yada, yada. And you see it starts doing things. And it says, let me know if you want to, you know, what, what I want to do here. And I said, yeah, go ahead and book the direct United flight here from San Francisco to New York Friday morning. And it gives me the options. And I said, would like to book business class at 9.20 a.m. flight. And sure enough, in the other browser window, it went and it put it into, and I happened to be logged in to United at oh, the wow. time. And it put it into my checkout, the literal flight that I wanted to. And all I have to do is go to the next step and uh, close the transaction. And it tells me in that transaction, okay, the reservation process is complete up to the payment step. And you can finalize by entering your payment details on United's website. It gives me a one and a two. And I can just click that and boom, it opens up the browser window. And it was doing that in the background. That's awesome. Which is pretty crazy. I guess it has related here. I could add lounge access for the business class flight. What it does is, you'll see here when it does this, it goes to the United and it says, find and add United Club access. See that little window there? That's yeah. the page. And you can see it steps and you see it moving around on the page doing stuff. So that's almost like a, like a browser container, if you will, Jason, that's doing things and you have like a, a keyhole vision into it. Yeah, it's like I'm watching it do the work. So here you That's can awesome. see a revision panel is open. Let me click change flight selection. I see we're now on the flight search page. Perfect. I can now see the flight search results. I can see flight UA 435 departing at 9.20 a.m. and the price. And it's just reasoning and it's doing it. Now, this is uh, what I've always wanted. This is what I want ChatGPT, Grok, and everybody to do. And so I think that this concept is going to be the winning concept. You were playing with Dia and doing some, uh, and Dia is by the browser company. Dia is by the browser company. And what struck me looking at Comet and looking at Dia this morning, Jason, is that they share in some ways a bit of UI. So what I have coming up here on screen is a screenshot we put together. This on the right is Dia. And then on the left, this is a screen capture from the Perplexity Comet video. But what you'll notice on both of these is that they had these right rails, these assistants. And so what they've done is introduce a brand new UI element into the browsing experience that takes up a good chunk of your screen, but it can do quite a lot as you just showed, but you don't always have to be exactly on the Perplexity website to do stuff. You can actually interact with your browser inside of Comet just from the right rail. And uh, I thought I'd show you an example of how this works in Dia's case. So what I have here is the Dia browser. And what I have over here, Jason, is my right rail. And you can ask it questions. Now, the difference between Comet and Dia uh, is that Dia is not agentic. So it can't go into this CNBC website, for example, and, and click around for me. But what it can do is see it and reason. So I can ask it like, what's the most important headline on this page? And it's gonna think for a little bit using its own LLM and then say, okay, the most important thing is it thinks Linda Yaccarino stepping down, which is interesting because earlier it said that the most important story was actually NVIDIA's $4 trillion market cap moment but this is what it looks like. It's slick, it's quick, it's pretty good. But I do feel like what Comet has put together goes a little bit further, frankly.